It's 2023. My eldest son, Deshaun Brayboy, he turns 34 years old today. I just want to take this time to say a few words about my son. A friend of mine had um, noticed that um, previously when I wrote the first post about his birthday, he had, um, he said, he noticed how I had mentioned that our children are also our guardian angels, you know? And um, he said, you should talk about that. And um, I can only speak about it based upon the relationship that I have with, with my son, with Deshaun. Um, see, Deshaun is a big part of the reason why I'm still here. I've been through um, a lot in life. And in a lot of instances, I'm, I'm just going to totally open up. Of when I just wanted to leave this planet, you know, um, there was a lot of times to where I would think of him and his brother, but I'm talking about him in particular. I would, I would, the creator would show me these images of Deshaun in my head and I would hear his voice and um, I don't know, I would all of a sudden just cheer right up and my mind would be set back in the um, manner that it should be. And it helped me to understand that even though our children are with us physically, what I come to know, there's there, even though they still reside in their flesh, they're still our spiritual guiders. So a portion of their spirit guides us as well. When he was, um, when Deshaun was like two years old, when me and his mother was um, still together, for I believe it was like two months, I had walking pneumonia and didn't even realize I had it. And um, I was going back and forth to work. I was losing a lot of weight um, because I didn't have an appetite. I became really pale and he sensed that it was something abnormal about his father because I was sleeping a whole lot. And what I noticed about him is that when I would sit in the living room and I'd be looking at a movie, he would always sit next to me. And I would look down, he, he would be looking up at me, kind of smiling and everything. And I would notice that when I would go back in the bedroom and lay down, he would always come back there and lay down with me. Now, um, it was one evening on my off days, I noticed that his mother was on the phone with her mother and she was slightly weeping because she couldn't understand like, um, she noticed that I was losing a whole lot of weight and I just didn't look good. And I overheard his mother saying, mama, I don't know what's wrong with David. I think he's sick. And um, he won't go to the hospital. And um, I don't understand what's wrong with him. And so I believe it was a day later, a mother had came over here to, um, came over to our place. And she, she um, yelled from the living room, David, come out of that bedroom, let me look at you. But before she got there, when um, I was asleep, I would look over, Deshaun was there. He stayed around me the whole time. And it's like, even though he was not able to um, ask me what I needed and 
or um, anything like that because he was just a two-year-old. But he stayed next to his dad because he was obviously his his dad's strength, you know, because um, I was feeling really terrible. But at the same time, um, he was he was there. So when her mother came over with her boyfriend, I came out and her mother looked at me and she said, nope, something's wrong with you and you need to go to the hospital and find out what's wrong. And so I went to the hospital and I came back and uh, the doctor told me that I had walking pneumonia. And so even though Deshaun was around me all of that time, Deshaun never got sick. But of course, I think it was like, the course of like a week, I had gotten better. I bring this up because regardless of everything that I've been through in my life, concerning their mother keeping them from me for three years and and um, for absolutely no reason. I know I make a lot of videos and I say that things transpire against me in my life for absolutely no reason. It's a fact because things happen. But during that three year period that I didn't see him and his brother, I was driving a bus and through a whole lot of pain and anguish of um, people lying to me, of not telling me where they was, was, was living and, and everything like that. Um, at the age of, I mean, I, was, I, I started sleeping around with a whole bunch of different women, figuring that um, that was gonna make me feel better. But I noticed that when it comes to your children, you have to have that relationship and so at the age of 14, Deshaun stood up to his mother and said, I want to see my dad. And for some strange reason, his mother was surprised of wanting him wanting to see his dad. And so she said, you really want to see him? And, you know, and I'm like, why would you think that he wouldn't want to see his father? You know, and so all of a sudden I got the phone call from him and we talked and um, their mother got on the phone and we talked and she gave me the address and, and everything. I saw a went by their place after three years and it was almost like I had to get to know my sons again. You know, and it's been a um, long process of getting to know my sons, you know, because during that time, there was a, um, they were little and they, they, they were during those periods of where they were very impressionable. You know, um, Deshaun was 11 and his brother was, um, eight or nine and so um, I was pushed out of their lives because I was um, getting ready to um, get married to this young lady that I met in the ministry who went to Stanford University and one night she was on her way back to Stanford University and I called their mother and I um, told them, I said, I'm going to be coming by there to pick them up because I have to take Kim to the airport. That was a young lady's name because she's getting ready to um, go back to Stanford University and she wants to see them. So I was going to go by there and pick them up and um, we were all going to join Kim at the airport while she um, go back to Stanford University. Their mother said, yeah, okay. So she hung up the phone. Three minutes later, she calls back and she said, no, you can't come get them. 
Because if you're not gonna spend any real time with them, then you're not gonna get them. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I try to spend time with them as much as you allow me to, you know? But um, that's what started this all of a sudden three years of me not seeing them, you know? So it was, it's a whole lot. But um, what, pre what brought that to an end was my son speaking up for me and saying that he wants to see his dad. And I've noticed ever since then, no matter what is said about me, uh, no matter of the slander and the lies, my son Deshaun has always stayed in my corner. You know, now we, we almost lost him in 2007 because he got hit by a car on a street called um, Spring Mountain. And so when I went to the hospital and I saw him and he was laying there, he was just, his left eye was closed. He was covered in blood and he was just trembling in pain. And I just, I just broke down, you know? And I asked them, I said, is he okay? And they said, yes, he's fine. But that wasn't enough for me. But what I noticed is my son looking up at me and he said, hey dad, I'm okay, Dad. I'm okay. So that gave me an instant boost. And so I was still shooken up by it. And so I immediately thought of his mother. And I told her, I, um, I told the nurses that she needs to see this. I can't take him out there like this and just drop him on her like this. So the nurse said, are you leaving him? And I'm like, no, I'm not leaving him. But his mother, she needs to come back here and see this. I can't take him out, out there like this. So I went out there and the first thing his mother said, did you leave him back there? And I'm like, no, you need to go back there and see this. And so I was accused of leaving my son. I was accused of abandoning my son simply because I was courteous enough to think of how this was going to affect his mother because it's not like he gets hit by a car every day. So, um, As she went back there, his younger brother, Dylan, was in the um, waiting room and he was, and I asked him, I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm okay. And so I went off to the side and I started talking to the creator. And I told the creator, look, I've already been through hell with my dad and pretty much the whole family. And I'm telling you right now, if you take my son from me, I'm going to cause so much pain on this earth. If you take my son from me, it's going to be me and you. And I heard the creator's voice through a feeling, not audible, you know, um, audible, like a whole lot of these so-called prophets tell you, but the creator's language comes through a feeling and it transmits to your mind a um, knowledge and you perceive it. The creator had asked me, if I take your son from you tonight, will you be able to accept it? And I answered, yes, I'll be able to accept it because I, we're not left with a choice of anything in life. We're not left with a choice of gaining or losing. Damn sure don't have a choice. 
Because if it's one thing of life that is certain, it is death. And so he ended up coming home that same night. It was it was a um, terrible experience. But um, what I learned from that light, from from that night, was that is that your children are your greatest love and your greatest fears. I tell a lot of people today, you really don't know what love is until you have children. Your greatest love is always going to be your children and your greatest fear is always going to be losing them. And so my son has always been in my life. He's been like my guardian angel. When I talked to him, I remember one night I was having a very bad night on my job. And I called Deshaun and just hearing his voice, even when he said, hello, everything just left, everything left. And after I got through talking with him, I didn't even tell him what type of night I was having because as soon as I heard his voice, everything was okay with me. And I don't know if a, a lot of you brothers feel that way about your sons, but my son has always been one of the primary power sources of my life. And I really don't know anyone more kinder and more humble than my son, Deshaun. He's been such an inspiration for me. And I will say that My son is me had I not gone through hell. And that's one of the reasons why I've always been very protective over what affects them, even from by way of my own family members. Because if you hurt me and you were of my family or are of my family, you would never get a chance to hurt mine. You would never get a chance to hurt mine. And so, um, I mean, there's so much that I can say about having sons, but having a son like Deshaun definitely keeps me going. He definitely keeps me going because when I look at him, I see myself had I not going through hell, but just his presence alone keeps me going along with the creator allowing me to be here. And so I will continue to encourage brothers to have very good relationships with their sons. I mean, there's a lot more than I can say, but I encourage brothers to continue to have very, very good communication with their sons. Be honest with your children. Always tell your children that you love them. Never allow them to go to sleep thinking that you don't like them as a human being. If you have disputes with them during the day, try your hardest to never allow them to go to sleep without resolving those issues. Because not only does it upset you, but it very much upsets them because they're your children and they need to know that they're loved. 
that they need to know that they're liked by you. That's one of the reasons why I made those videos. Um, create no monsters when I used the footage of the movie Fences with Denzel of that very uh, verbal and emotionally abusive scene out of the movie Fences. We as men should always express love and compassion towards our sons. And that's not a feminine, feminine attribute. That's a very honest and fatherly attribute. And if some of you brothers are out there with this over masculine attitude, feeling as though you don't want to appear soft and you don't want to uh, raise your sons up being soft by not showing them any affection. That's one of the biggest mistakes that you can ever do to your son. To me, that is abuse worried about um, how the world is going to see you in reference to your relationship with your son. Your sons need to know that they're liked and your sons need to know that they're loved regardless of what they may hear about you as long as your relationship with your sons are good and on point and in the way that it should be only then can you really, in fact, say that you're their fathers. So on this day, my son Deshaun turns 34 years old. And I'm proud to say that this man is my son. He's my guardian angel. He's my inspiration in a whole lot of different areas in my life. You know, and um, I thank him and I thank the creator for gifting me with him. And hopefully this will inspire other brothers to make videos like these honoring and loving their sons on their birthdays. So I salute you, Deshaun. And I want to say that I love you. And I salute you in your on your birthday of becoming 34 years old. I love you and you have a good time tonight. All right, talk to you later.